the great Lomas Brown, who I saw was Lomas. on the Big team Lomas. the last time the Lions won a playoff game. Lomas, thanks so much for the time. <clears throat> How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, doing great. A little tired, you know, from last night, but a great win, man. And uh, I'm just so excited for the guys, man. So excited for this city. It's just, it's been a long time, man. The alumni are happy this, that this is happening. And, man, it, it, it's just great, man. I, I, I got so many words to say about it, man. And, man, just from listening to you guys talk about Jared and what he was able to do, man. You're right, man. I feel so good for him. Um, and like you say, the, it's not written yet. I mean, we got some more games to play, yeah. man. So we'll see. Lomas, you mentioned the alumni, and there were a number of Lions alumni at the game last night. Hell, I, I mean, I, I know you didn't play with them, but I saw Carryon Johnson was even oh, there. Yeah. I got you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, like uh, everybody wanted to be there last night. What did last night's win mean to you guys? The the players who have been in that locker room, the players who have uh, blood, sweat, and tears for this organization. What did that mean to you guys? I mean, you know, myself, Kevin Glover, uh, Barry, we were down on the field earlier. And, you know, just reflecting back on that, just, you know, just thinking that, um, you know, 91, 92 would be the last time we would be in that position. I mean, even just thinking back to when we were in the locker room, we used to think about that, that man, you know, after that 91 season, we had a long way to go, man. It was us in Dallas. That's all everybody was talking about, man. And we thought we were going to make a run in the 90s. And, you know, things happen, circumstances happen, injuries happen, tragedies happen. And for whatever reason, it took this long to get back. So, you know, for us guys, like I say, man, we bleed Honolulu silver and blue. Uh, blue and silver, man. Yeah. <laughs> and... You know, it's great. It's going to always be that way. And I say once a lion, a lion, always a lion. Yeah, well, I'm so proud of you, man. I know how it is to be a part of alumni base. And you guys win when you win, when the team wins. Everybody that's ever been a part of that situation gets a chance to win. I want to bring it out to the game real quick and just make an open question. Isn't it amazing what a team can do when the players on the team play? I'm talking about those dudes. Talk about all the guys on the Lions team that I can see here. Dudes, whether it's Aiden Hutchinson, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, Amar Ross St. Brown, insert one of those dudes. When they show up, you're probably not going to beat that team. No, I mean, you're right about that. And that's what, you know, that's what playoff ball is all about, too. I mean, it's about the guys stepping up, the stars stepping up and showing why they're stars. And you're right, man, to see Aiden Hutchinson, to see all these young guys. That's the thing about it, Bradley. All these guys are so young, man. And the, the way they're performing on this stage, I mean, you know, you take a guy like Sam Laporta, there's no way I thought he was going to play, or if he did play, was going to be effective. Man, he was out there running around like he hadn't had a knee injury. You know, what contributing, injury? especially in the blocking game, and Amin Ra, and, you know, just all the guys, even in the, you know, we didn't do it, uh, get over 100 yards rushing, but just what those guys were able to do, and I'm going to tell you, bro, I'm going to tell you who it was last night. It was those five guys up front, man. And I'm not just saying that because I played that position. Them boys dominated. You yeah. didn't hardly hear Aaron Donald's name. You didn't hardly hear Kobe Turner's name. Nope. I mean, they really dominated them up front, and that's what they had to do, man. So you got to give kudos to those five guys up front because they played their tails off last night. 100%. And the only name you heard was 53 because they were getting past that D-line level. Lomas, you brought up the big guys up front. I thought it was just me that noticed, but the difference between the Rams and the Lions, man, it was physicality. Like, just every player from the Rams almost got knocked out the game. Like, the Lions bought that pause wood. You know what that means? We play back in the day. Like, <laughs> they bring that wood. That means they, they hitting hard. So, just talk about the physicality of the Detroit Lions last night. Yeah, I mean, and I'm telling you, man, little fella, man, CJ, man, I'm telling you, man. Gardner, Tasmanian man, devil. He brings it. I'm telling you, he gets some boys hyped up, man. Hey, 
He be getting me hiked up when I see him in the tunnel heading to the game, man. Yeah. Have me ready to try to scrap it on the game, man. He's Pause. always high motor, always high intensity. He, say, he says the right things, too. It ain't just, you know how it is, Braylon. You can have it's not empty talk. just talks all the time to hear himself talk. He ain't like that. He's nope. not like that. What he says has meaning to it. And I think that's why them guys respect him. Alexander's a lonely. He out there playing down here, laying down the wood, like you say. Yeah. Man, everybody, Aiden was bringing it, man. They were holding them as they always as you should. every game, man. But he was still getting back there, man. Panay. I'm you, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, I, I mean, it's, it's just been all around, man. It's been an all around effort, man. Like you say, Panay Sewell up front, man. All those guys, they bring that physicality, but guess what? That's Dan Campbell type football. Hey, Lo, that first quarter, that first half was immaculate. It was just beautiful. And it's a shame that the referees took that offside play away. That the Lions probably could have put that game away in the first half had they gotten that mm. offsides right. Grossman. They called that play yeah. wrong. And then the Lions after that. I don't know, man. I don't know what happened to the offense after that. I just want to ask you if you have any worries after that first half was over because one field goal only in the second half. Yeah, the thing about it, man, is teams are going to adjust. Yeah. Co great coaches, good coaches. Halftime adjustments. They're going to adjust to you, man. They go win in the halftime, and you got to give McVay, you got to give uh, Raheem Morris. Yep. Uh, the defensive coordinator for the L.A. Rams. They came out and they made adjustments to what we were doing. So, to me, you tip that to very good coaching, great coaching. Again, what what did we do? We turned around and we I think we turned uh, turned our game plan around on the defensive side of the ball because if you yeah. think about it, our defense played well towards the end. Other than, man, I tell you what, they got the start. Puka. I know you don't talk about him, man. Oh, my God. Puka. Man, oh, he was killing us last night. Hey, he's going to be – he's good, Braylon. Hey, Lomas. Some of them catches he was making, bro. It's not just the Lions. He did that to the Ravens in Baltimore. Yeah. He's man. like that. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I mean, he make the contested wow. catches. Think about man, that, man. And he's big, and he can run after he get the ball. They got a they got a nice star in him, man. Yeah. yeah let, anyway. let me say this, Bray. I've always, uh, uh, Lomas, I've always been hard on the kicking game uh, here. But Jack Fox was unbelievable, and yes. Michael Badgley from fifty four yards out. Didn't man, any. You know what? He he came through when you needed him, man. That that was huge. That's what we needed. We needed to see that. Think about it. We needed to see that, man. And like you say, he came through, Maz. I mean, look, I'm not shocked by Jack Fox, man. This Woo. dude is, man, he wow. got a, I don't know what type of leg that is. He has. <laughs> the great thing about him, though, man, all his punts have hang time on it, man. I mean, all of them do, man. And that's the great thing about him. He going to give the special teams a chance to get up under those punts, you know, and to cause chaos, man, because of how high he kicks it up there. So we know we got a weapon with him, man. We just needed to find out if our kicker could perform under, um, under pressure, and he did. Hey, Lomas, how good is this football team? How, how many more can they go? Can they win it all? I mean, they're in the dance. I mean, they're in the dance right now, man. And you can't just put, I don't think you could put a limit on it, to be honest with you, man. You know, we, we have to see what's going to happen tonight. Um, but I don't think you could put a limit on what can happen this year. I really don't, man. What I always say, and I played in two of those things, those Super Bowls, and one, one of them is that, all the stars have to align right for you to win the Super Bowl. You know, throughout the whole season, everything has to align up right for you. And the, fall, the stars have to fall in place. And that's what seems to be going on with this team right now. Think about it. This For him, Jared, to beat uh, Matthew Stafford, man, that seemed like that's prob that might be, could be one of the toughest patterns to get there, you know. 
you never know what's going to happen, who we're going to face next, man. But I, I feel so confident in these guys that, hey, they can win each game. If they take each game by game, they can win each game out. Lomas, you have been involved with this organization in one way or the other for parts of five decades. 80s, 90s, 2000s, the 10s, the teens, whatever, the 20s. Don't date that, man. So, well, I'm, I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I'm I'm just okay, saying. I'm why did these guys get it right? How did these guys get it right? You know, I, I've always said, man, that this was the best coaching staff that I've been around since 85. Hands down, this is the best coaching staff I think the Lions have had, you know. And I think that coupled with Brad Holmes. Now, we had a good uh, front office uh, when I was here. Um, you know, Kevin Colbert and all those guys, they went on to Pittsburgh to win uh, multiple Super Bowls. Uh, they were here um, until Matt Millen decided he didn't want them here. But uh, we had a great front office. But I think now with this coaching staff, because think about it, man, you got all these ex-players. You got Randall L. who has Super Bowl experience. But I've said since this coaching staff has been here, if I could come off the field, if I'm having a tough time on the field and I can come off and my coach that I'm coming off the field to is a guy that played the same position I played and knows what I'm going through, that just gives me a sense of comfort. You know what I'm saying? You get a sense of comfort about that as a player because this guy has been there, done that. And I just think, you know, they got the right mix of coaches there. And I think that's what's taking them over the top. I know I would say – probably with us you know if we had that coaching staff man the sky would have been the limit Loma it's funny you talk about the uh, the former players on the coaching staff Steve Hyden was my tight end when I was in Cleveland Hank Fraley was the center when I was in Cleveland and Mark Brunel was the backup quarterback <laughs> when I was with the New York Jets so you talk about those backup players all have tremendous experience Hank Fraley with the Eagles and then Mark his years with uh, Jacksonville so you got a hell of a staff the guys I even played with damn does that make me old go ahead man <laughs> <laughs> getting up there, man. You getting up there. You getting up there. That list of players getting up there, Bray. Yeah. Hey, pipe down. <laughs> pipe down. <laughs> hey, Lomas. Uh, I know you probably. I know watching, being at Ford Field early. I was there early, just like you. And they had the Dallas game on the big screen. And every time the Packers scored, that crowd went. It was like a home game. Watching that Packers Cowboys game. I brought me so much joy to see it. But I want to ask you this. That Packer team is on the rise. The Lions, on the rise. The Bears, on the rise. On the, rise. the Vikings, a quarterback if they, get, if they get Kirk Cousins back. That's the best division in football all of a sudden. Hey, look, that's why I say we got to get it done this year. Yep. Whatever we going to do. We got to do it this year because, like you say, man, this division is only getting better, man. Yeah. Jordan Love looks good, man. And Woo. I'm telling you, like you said, the, the Bears could flip their, their organization with this draft that's coming up. So you're right. It's getting bigger. I'm sorry. It's getting uh, better and better. Um, seem like each and every year. So that's why I say you put a sense of urgency if you're the Lions on what you're going to get accomplished this year. You know, and stuff, because it's going to be some tough roles ahead, you know, going up against these teams. But I'm glad our window, I think our window with what we have here, I think our window should be open the next oh, three, yeah. four, even maybe five years. Our window, I think, should be open. Easy. And it starts this year. Lomas Brown, thank you yes, so sir. much for your time. Thanks, uh, no, it was a long night, and, and we always look forward to speaking with you and can't wait to do it again next week. How about that? Appreciate it, man. Y'all take care. You guys, the great, Love you, big Lomas. the great Lomas Brown. You can follow him on Twitter on X at Lomas Brown seventy five. We will get a break in. Come right back.